Hey everyone, this is Eric. In this week's Skill Builder, we're going to do something a little bit different as I'm going to show you how to go from sketch book to sketch up by turning one of my drawings into a 3D model. So this was an idea that I had the other day when I was going through my sketchbook and I was thinking, you know what, there's some really nice line quality in there. There's something kind of unique about your own drawings that I think when you go into 3D modeling, you tend to lose a little bit because the computer program does exactly what it's supposed to do, is it makes everything perfect and precise. And you lose a little bit of that energy. But the problem with the 2D drawing, of course, is that it's 2D. It sits there living in your sketchbook and I can't really go through it and turn around and orbit the way that I do with my SketchUp model. So in, this week I thought I'm going to play around and see if it actually works for me to turn one of my drawings into a 3D model, which actually it turns out that you can. So that's what I'm going to show you. So let's actually just get to it. Okay, so I've got my sketch here. Um, I just to save time, I've already imported it in. If you've watched one of my previous skill builders, it's actually called tracing reference images. Now I actually set this up as a tracing template that I can use. So I'm using my own template that I that I know that I want when I'm going to go tracing some images. So I've get my standard view, and I have my trace view. These are scene tabs that are already set up for me. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we'll get to that in just a second. So the other thing I did to save some time is not only imported the sketch, but I also scaled it already. So you can see not everything's exactly the same scale, but that's okay because I'm going to scale. Uh, I can always scale things individually depending on um, you know what it needs to be in the real world. So so I've got this little street scene here, and as you can see, it's um, just kind of a just a typical downtown Main Street, maybe a movie theater, some shops and stuff like that. I've got my sidewalk. I've got some people that are going to walk down the sidewalk. And then, of course, I've got a tree that I'm going to use as a, a street tree to go across. Um, so that's why I drew those elements separate, because I know that I'm going to work with them as individual elements. So switching over to my trace tab here, all I did was with this setup, I'm not going to repeat what I've already done in another skill builder. But basically, what I've done is I've changed my line color and I have put on x-ray mode. And the reason for doing that is that what I want to do Sorry, I skipped a step. First thing I want to do is actually, I think I'm going to explode this first. You don't have to explode it first, but I'm going to. You'll see for in a second when I just start drawing some big rectangles, I changed my line color to something like pink because it makes it just easier to see because when you're drawing black on black, uh, for me anyway, uh, it can get really difficult. So now whether you want to trace just with big, broad, rectangular strokes and then go in and erase the inside, that's totally fine. Or just switching over to the line tool, if it's easier for you, uh, just go ahead and trace over the edges. Now one thing I want to point out, and this is the important part, is that for me anyway, when I'm working with my own drawings, I may I want to use my edges as the edges in the model. So if I turned off my edges for some reason, or if I wanted to make them sort of fade back to the background a little bit, I'm actually seeing my sketch edges. So as I'm tracing or drawing, I'm 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 making sure that I'm staying outside of my my drawing sketches, or at least my hand drawn sketch line. So you can see, as opposed to being on the inside, if I zoom in, I'm on the outside of that. That's the only kind of tip that I wanted to point out there as far as tracing. I'm actually not going to trace this whole thing because you'll see that it'll take it'll take me a few minutes, um, and I don't want to use our time just watching me trace. Uh, it might not be be very much fun. So I actually went ahead and just added a scene here where I already traced over everything. Um, so you can see there it is where I started, and here it is where I've already just traced this out to save some time. Okay, so what's the next step? I've traced everything. Um, I'm going to group everything. So I'm going to go ahead and make each one a individual group. I know there's extensions you can use to do this all at once if you've got lots, but if I've only got a few there, it only takes a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and group each one of those. Now the next step for me anyway is... I'm going to switch over to the rotate tool and I want to rotate. 
Actually, you know what? I'm gonna do more than one at a time. I wanna grab this, 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 not my sidewalk, switch over to the rotate tool. I'm gonna use my keyboard, my right arrow key so that I'm rotating. Oh no, actually, you know what? I'm gonna take that back and I'll show you why because I kind of want everything to stay on the same plane. So I'm gonna go 90 on that one and then I'm gonna grab these three and I'm gonna rotate them again I get the right one, 90 degrees, I'm entering 90 in, and there we go. So now everything's sort of facing up the way that I want it to be. I'm gonna come back to these guys in a minute and my tree. Right now I wanna actually give some thickness to the building elevation. So first thing I wanna do is double check the texture and see if it's projected or not. Now, if I do that, it might change. So. I'm gonna leave that alone for right now and just leave it as it is because you can see it actually reoriented. Um, and then I wanna show you some other things. I've already done this. So if I pull backwards, I'm gonna lose my texture. If I pull forwards, you can see that it's actually retaining the texture, but I'm getting kind of a weird repeatable pattern here that I don't like. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sample my texture first, and then I'm gonna push this using the push pull and I'm gonna push this backwards and just give it sort of a thickness, doesn't really matter what it is. And then I'm gonna come back with a paint bucket and I'm gonna paint bucket back that first face right on top again. Now the next step is to decide whether or not I want to add any more detail than I have right here. In this case, I can offset the roof, I can push that down, or I can come in here and starting at the bottom, maybe pick up, let me try that again, maybe pick up some of these doorways and push those in, maybe even grab the windows themselves. I'm going pretty quick here. I think obviously I could do this where I'm thinking about, oh, that only needs to be six inches or that only should be a foot. Um, but to keep things moving quickly, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a few of these, push that in. And just for fun, I'm gonna do this whole building. I wanna push this whole one back as if it sits a little bit further back. And then the same thing, I wanna grab sort of that window edge, maybe that's a shop or something, and that pushes back. Now, if I turn my shadows on and I turn my hidden line style on, you can see much better sort of the articulation that I'm starting to put in, which is kind of cool because even in just a couple of minutes with a really loose hand sketch, you can see, um, the building's massing and form and spaces are already starting to show. So I'm gonna turn those shadows back off. I'm gonna turn my texture, shaded with textures face style back on um, so I can see that. So let's pause there right now. I actually have another version that has more articulation, but um, you get the idea. So let's move forward with my people. I wanna turn these into face me components along with my tree. So I'm gonna grab my tree, bring that over, right click it, say make component, Set component axis, make sure it's set at least close to the center with blue pointing up. Always face camera, create. I'm gonna do the same thing, make component, set component axis, find somewhere near the middle because that's where these guys are gonna rotate from. Always face camera and one more. I don't have to do all of these because it's the same thing repeated, but might as well while we're in there. So now when I turn, you can see that my people in my trees will follow me as I rotate around. Lastly, it's gonna be this sidewalk group. I'm gonna enter into that, switch to my push-pull tool and pull that up, in this case, six inches because I am working to scale. I am gonna make this a component as well, but I'm not going to make it face me, obviously, because it sits flat on the ground. So I'm just gonna create that and I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut for move and my modifier, which is option alt, and I'm gonna make a copy of it. One thing I see here is that I'm getting the edge of both the sidewalk and I'm getting my drawn edge, almost like a double score line. So to fix that, I can just grab this and move that edge over. And I'm actually gonna let, in this case, I'm gonna let the SketchUp edge be the edge for that sidewalk. So when you zoom out, you can't really sort of tell, kind of blends in with my hand sketch edge. Kind of cool. And of course, the reason for using a component on this is if for some reason I needed to go in and let's just say I needed to extend that and you'll see why in a second, if I wanted to pull that back a little bit further, um, 
in order to create a little bit more space. Of course, it's doing it to all of them, which is great. I'm going to grab those, make a group, and that's pretty much it. From here on out, it's just arrange the pieces. So in this case, all I need to do is just grab my sidewalk, place that wherever I want it um, up against my building face so that, I'm, of course, I'm covering any gaps that I'm showing, and then place my, my trees. Now, I'm going to stop there because I actually have a finished version, and I'm also taking quite a little bit of time to do this, so I want to make sort of just wrap up because I know you get the idea. So let's just pause here as far as building the model and jump straight into what it actually looks like, which is right here, my final perspective. So obviously, um, I spent a little bit of time. I dropped a couple of cars in. They're low poly cars. They look great, actually, because they almost look hand drawn, even though they're not. They're, they're SketchUp geometry. Um, same thing, I've got my face me people. So I could just move them around. And of course, if I rotate, uh, that's cool too. And then I've got some bike racks that I found on the 3D warehouse. So what's cool about this style is that you can kind of mix and match with either SketchUp uh, pre-built components from 3D Warehouse or just some line work that you've drawn. And in this case, I've got a watermark as my background and I think it's starting to look pretty cool. So just to kind of wrap up, I just want to kind of go in and just be like, hey, I'm, I'm in my sketch. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to see what it was like to experience it, to kind of walk down that street and feel like uh, I was bringing my sketchbook to life. So that's it. That's pretty much easy. If you know how to import an image, if you know how to trace over an image, you know how to make a component and a group of a part of that image, then that's all you need to do to be able to turn a hand drawing from your sketchbook or from Photoshop or wherever your drawings are coming from into a SketchUp model. So with that, I'll leave you there. I'll, like always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We do read the comments, so be sure to let us know if you think you've got a better way to do something or if you want to kind of see why or how we did something, feel free to ask a question. And we'll be sure to, I'll be sure to reply and we'll keep the conversation going there. So thanks again and see you next time.